Hey, uh, good morning. It's Rob Brown with Rob's Vlog, and I'm um, sitting here today with Lewis Brown, Duddy, who's our parts guy too, and uh, Mr. Splicer extraordinaire. And you know, uh, we do a little bit of splicing around here. We make custom lines, we make painters, you know, uh, basically your tagline that goes from your mooring to your uh, boat while it's out on the lake. And Duddy, we've been talking about uh, building a handful of mooring lines ahead of time, maybe 30 or 40 of them for in season for what? Uh, a oh, couple of years. couple, three years. We're finally getting around to it, eh? We don't want to hurry these things okay. by any means. So today we figured was a good day, and if you look around, there's all kinds of things with rope hanging on them, and uh, we're going to make up a few splice, but I don't know if anybody's ever seen a splice. And this is basically just regular twisted nylon, and this is a pretty tight weave. This is a, uh, this is a New England rope. I like New England ropes. They're very tight, you can see. Uh, to get into, you basically start it off, and starting it is the toughest part. You have to peel off a certain amount of tag line to get started, and you're really just jumping over, one over the other. It's a little bit of a wrestling match with this. I like using the New England rope simply because of the tight weave. Once you get it in place and you tighten it down really solid, uh, the pull, the natural pull of itself, and once it's in the water, it, uh, it softens up a little bit, and then it st as it starts to dry, it really tightens up. But that basically is your first rotation. It, it's not so much three, but it, it's four. In just a minute, I'll do this one. And I'll slow down just a little bit and show you again how to do it. Uh, Duddy's been working on this now for a couple of years. And we've, uh, like I said, we make a handful of, of different lines here uh, every year. Painters are something we do probably the most of. Uh, we do a lot of other mooring lines. Uh, we do a lot of our own dock lines. Uh, a couple of things we'll show you here in just a second after we get going. We'll show you a few of the things that, uh, little custom lines that we make. So we're going to go on to just kind of trying to make up a few lines. And if you guys want to look in for just a few minutes, and then we'll get back to uh, showing you some of the other custom lines that we make. So just another one of those things we do during the winter. So. Or at least this is one winner that we're finally getting around to doing it, eh, Dud? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm making a small uh, painter here for one of our displays. And I thought I'd slow down. You see, I've got the tag lines broken. I've got my, my uh, line basically uh, separated here. I'm going to take the top one, and I'm going to slide it through that first, that first uh, basically, that overlap right there. Then I'm going to take the second one. I'm going to open that up, the, the second groove, and I'm going to run the line through that as well. I'm going to pull those nice and tight. The third one you can see is coming from over here. Once you flip it over, flip it directly over, you'll see this top line right here. Put your finger up through there, open that up, run that through. That first, those are your first three revolutions. If you get to that part, the rest of it is almost easy. You see this one will be exposed on that back side. You need to take that first one once again and go up underneath, pull through, and here's where you want to snug everything up nice and tight. Pull everything good, square it up on the, uh, on the thimble if you're using a thimble, tighten it up good, and if you got it right, you could hold it upside down right now and you can see how they just fall you know, in like, a, you know, in, in three, three pieces there in almost a triangle form. And if from that point, you can grab any one of them and just keep rotating is what you're going to do and run the line underneath itself. And this is what, you know, is considered basically is the correct term is the back splice. And at every revolution, I always pull the thing nice and square. So again, you end up with what looks to be the, like this. If you've got it going right, if you've started it right, and you have your revolution moving right, it's going to look like that after you do your three revolutions each time. So, as you can see, it starts to get bound up on the other end a little bit. So, once you get to that point, at this point, we've done three revolutions, and that will equal the strength of the line itself. Uh, I usually will go four. I just give it that extra little bit. And also, why waste the tag lines here? I usually start with a little extra. I hate to end up with just these little pieces kind of poking through at the end. Uh, I like to be able to tie those tag lines off, cut them nice and clean, and then see it cinch them in there. When you're done, I take and give it a good roll like this. 
I pull it tight on the uh, thimble so when you're done you should have a nice looking splice like this you rotate it around you can see there's no humps and bumps and whatnot so it, it's all uniform pretty much all the way through in the small line sometimes. Well, we didn't get 40 of them done today, <laughs> Doug, but we're getting a little, we're getting close all the time, so. Hey, we've got a handful of painters here. This is a dual line. This is kind of a staple of ours. We've got a connection at the buoy, and then we've got a, a shorter line with a number three swivel and then a bull nose snap, which basically is safety line. So that's probably what our best seller did right there. We're slowly but surely filling the bucket. What else we got here? We got a single. Yeah, that's just a regular one line, basically one snap hook, and you know smaller boats, lightweight boats and whatnot. Uh, if you're not in a real rough area, a little sailboat or something, shackle will go. That one goes in that bucket right there. This one is a small, just a dock line. Uh, I call these, there's a couple of them here. There's this one, which has, it's a little three footer. It's kind of like for me, it's the lazy man's dock line. We measure these out to specifics, hook it to a cleat on the dock. When, a guy, when you come in, you dock, you just instantly hook it up. It's already pre-tied for you, makes it simple. We'll have to find a place to hang on. All. Same type of concept here, except cleat on one side, maybe you've got a ring on your dock on the other side, so. This is another dual line painter, right, Doug? Yeah. Like I said, that's basically our go-to. That's our staple. That goes in that bucket right there. Dock lines, just regular dock lines, dead head on one end, loop on the other. Uh, this is kind of a nice line. We use this, basically it's a lead line. Uh, it's got a loop on one end and it's got uh, and it's got a snap hook on the other. Usually, what are they, 20 feet or 25 yeah, feet? 20 feet. So if you're launching the boat or whatnot and you're away from the uh, a dock a little bit, you can snap this on the eye hook or hook it onto the cleat, hang on to it while somebody drops it in the water, then you can bring it back to you. So those are the things that we keep around the store and we can make all kinds of custom lines. I'm sure your dealers close to you can too. So uh, what do we got, Duddy? We got maybe uh, about 50 or 60 more lines to go. Yeah, about that many. Eh, we'll get them done by boat shows. Hey, it's Rob Brown with Rob's Vlog, splicing today. Hope you might've picked up a little hint or something. If you have any questions on it, Give us a holler. Give me a call. We'll, uh, what am I going to do, Dad? Yeah. I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer it. Thanks for watching.